Well, praise the Lord, here we are another Thursday evening, and I'm not going to say it. I know all of you that listen uh, on a regular basis, you know what I'm going to say, but you know i got to say it anyways. Thursdays is my most favorite time of the week. It's not Friday, uh, it's not Wednesday, it's Thursday, and that's because we have the opportunity to come into the Lord's round table to see who the Lord has opened up the door to. So uh, for those of you that don't know, my name is Steve. And I'll be your doorman tonight, and the door is open. You're all welcome to come in and sit around the Lord's round table. And we're excited uh, about the brother that's with us here. And you all know I hate the word guest. That sounds too secular to me. We're all in the family of Christ. And for those of you that are listening that are not quite sure whether you're in the family of Christ or not, in the family of Jesus, you'll find out tonight. And uh, we hope that, you know, if in fact that you don't know uh, you know, if something happened to you today, if you don't know where you would spend an eternity, I pray that while you're listening to our brother speak, that that'd be something that you'd be thinking about. And uh, if you have any questions, we sure like to lead you in the right direction because we never know when that time will come, when we will all be standing in front of the Lord. And he's going to tell you one of two things. He's either going to tell you, come in, my good and faithful servant, for you ran your race. That's what you want to hear. Or he's going to hear, depart from me, you're doers of iniquity, and I know you're not. And uh, you definitely do not want to hear that. So if you're not sure before the end of this service, make sure you get all the facts. Make sure that you know, because, again, you don't know what the next turn in the road is going to bring. You don't know if you go to sleep tonight if you wake up in the morning. So that is uh, a very important decision to be made. But with that being said, uh, our brother that is with us tonight, uh, his name is uh, Ron Wolf, And Ron Wolf is the national Sergeant of Arms uh, for Hellfighters Motorcycle Ministry. Uh, I was introduced to him and uh, the ministry here uh, eh, probably about a month maybe at the most. And uh, I've been excited ever since I started reading about you guys, Ron. And I know when uh, hey. when you bring it tonight, there's going to be a whole lot of people going, wow, Steve, I see what you mean. So with that being said, Brother Ron, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to to, to reach out and speak. Uh, welcome everybody that's uh, listening. Um, just uh, it's been amazing the last several years of my life to to see all the doors that God opens and 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 all the people that are really hungry for His Word and hungry for that filling that empty void. And uh, it's, it's just been uh, amazing to uh, come along the side of so many other ministries such as, such as yours, Steve, and, and, you know, just being able to uh, uh, work with each other. And that's what we should be doing. Um, I, I guess I, I, I'll start out just by talking a little bit about Hellfighters. And by all means, Steve, you got any questions or if you want to uh, – if anybody's got any questions or whatnot along the way, that's that's fine. But uh, Hellfighters uh, Christian Ministries is is more than just a motorcycle ministry. We uh, we have uh, foot soldiers that are uh, not uh, riding motorcycles. Uh, we do uh, have the motorcycle ministry, and that's what really started Hellfighters Christian Ministries off. Um, but I mean, we're we're into all kinds of things. I mean, we we do a track ministry, we do a Bible ministry where we pass out tracks and Bibles. Um, just to give you an idea, I I think uh, I was talking with our national uh, uh, president this this afternoon and uh, Mike Grubb, and Mike uh, said that we've got about three hundred thousand tracks that we've distributed uh, uh, this past year. And I think it was right at about 13,000 uh, New Testament Bibles. Um, so uh, we're, we're pretty busy. We do Sturges, uh, motorcycle uh, rally. Um, we, we do uh, several other rallies randomly uh, as a national event. And then each, each of our units participate in uh, the rallies uh, in, in their neck of the woods or their state and uh, sometimes we get other units uh, or chapters that come in and uh, 
and help them out. Uh, it's just a really unique ministry, the way the way that we do things. We do a homeless ministry. Um, we uh, uh, we've got a couple chapters that that are dedicated uh, at least once a year to do a, a, a great big thing for widows. And uh, I mean, they're doing the things that they're, that, we're, that they're supposed to be doing. And I'm just so proud of all the hell fighters uh, throughout the nation that, uh, and, and we, we do have two chapters in, in Belize. Uh, but uh, just, they're just some awesome people uh, to work with. Um, you got any questions with the, about, about the ministry, Steve? Well, you know, I do have uh, a question. You know, when uh, Hellfighters first started, as you said, you know, they, uh, you know, it did start as a motorcycle uh, part of the ministry. I haven't, uh, you know, I, I don't run down in that part of the country, so I haven't run across any of you. Uh, my question to you would be, as uh, those that are in the motorcycle part of the ministry, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, do you guys fly colors? That's correct. We do. Okay, okay. And and I, and I figured you do, but the question I have with that as well is like a two-part question here. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, we know those that have been in, the, you know, in that bike lifestyle or, you know, know of it, you know, there, there's a lot of controversy uh, throughout, and uh, some get along with some, and most of them don't get along with each other. Uh, with you with you guys flying colors like that, have you ever ran across any kind of situation where you've been, uh, you know, uh, challenged, not on a high level, but, you know, in, in, on any level or whatsoever for the very fact that you do fly colors and in the, in the state and the city that you fly them in? Well, you know, we, we have. To answer, I mean, the upfront answer is yes, it, it's happened. Um, since, since we've since we've grown and established uh, a state at a time or a, a chapter at a time, we, we call them units, not chapters. But uh, um, we, we're a ministry. We're not an MC. Um, we don't we don't claim to be a riding club. We we, we go in as a, as a motorcycle ministry. Um, so we instead of having an MM or an MC patch, we have an MM patch. The the contra we don't have much controversy anymore uh, since we've uh, had had a good uh, national uh, established because um, we kind of foresee things coming now and we, we go and make sure that we do things right we introduce our, ourselves and uh, let let, uh, let the, the dominant clubs in those states realize who we are let them get to know us and we, we've really not had much of a problem um, basically flying our patch um, the biggest thing about that is, is we are who we say we are, and uh, any club, any MC that you run across uh, will call you out, especially if you're not being who you say you are. If you're if you're wanting to be like them, then they're probably going to frown on you you flying your colors in, in their state without going through them, right. uh, or just becoming part of them. But, uh, right, you know, anymore, um, we kind of got the protocol down to what, the, the way that we know that uh, we have to start a chapter or a unit, and uh, uh, we, we, we go through the right channels, talk to the right people, and uh, we, we really don't have much of a problem. We don't have much of a problem running through states, um, but, you know, if we're traveling, it's... Uh, uh, the only time we we would have a problem now is if it's like like you didn't know about us, Steve. It's uh, it's kind of the same situation. If we're if we're traveling through a uh, a state and uh, they don't know who we are, I mean I I've been I've been asked where are you from, where are you out of, what you know, what are you about, but it's it's ne it's never been a derogatory thing. I've I've just been questioned. Right. And, uh, Give, give 
them the right answers, give them the the, the real answers, and uh, everything's hunky dory. You know, it's, uh, it it works out works out good. Amen, amen. Probably a lot that helps you guys too is the simple fact that you do go to Sturgis. You know, which uh, you know, for those that aren't familiar with it, that's one of the biggest bike rallies that there is in the country. Uh, people come there from all over, and they come there from uh, outside of this country. So probably as you guys are, you know, you demonstrate who you are at these big events like that, uh, I'm sure you do become quite well known, and uh, you're not, you know, there is no problem. But, you know, like all of us, you know, when we're running down the highway and you look in the mirror, and and I know I do this all the time, you know, you see a bunch of uh, bikes coming up on you as they're passing, you're looking on their back to, uh, to see who they are you know, and where they're from, but, right. you know, what's amazing about it is, uh, you know, the Word of God says he encampus his angels around about those that love him and are called according to his purpose, and, uh, you know, you guys are called according to his purpose. You obviously love him, so you definitely have the hedge <laughs> of protection around you. You know, you think about all these, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, I remember uh, reading about, uh, I was reading in a Billy Graham book, and it was talking about a young couple that, you know, they went into the Amazon down in South America somewhere and was going to, uh, you know, minister to a, a tribe of people down there that, you know, don't know who they are, haven't seen people around in that. And, uh, you know, it was a young couple. And as they were in their uh, little uh, hut or whatever you want to call it, they looked out and they seen all these uh, warriors from this tribe along the wood edge. And out of fear, they uh, dropped and they just started praying. And they prayed until the sun come up. When the sun come up, there was nobody there. And Later in time, they became good friends with, uh, you know, with this tribe and ministered. And some of them come to know the Lord, and the chief was one of them. And uh, on one occasion of meeting with him, they asked him, you know, about that day. And he said, yeah, my warriors come to uh, take you out, you know, for lack of better, you know, I'm paraphrasing, of course. But he says they, they come, to, come to do an end to you. But when they saw all your warriors on the porch and around your hut, they got afraid and ran off. You know, that's those, those are the angels that camp at themselves. So I'm sure that, uh, you know, as um, you guys go out and you minister in the way that you do, uh, you do have that protection around you. I, I, most definitely. Uh, I, without a question, and you, you can see God's hands at work in, in just about 100% of it. Uh, uh, he, you, you, you know, as, as a Christian, and being uh, called out as a Christian, being in a Christian ministry, and, and being in a motorcycle ministry, um, the, the biggest thing is, is you know, where, where's our morals? You know, I mean, the, the the things that save us out doing ministry more than anything is is being very respectful for humanity. You know, I mean, it, it, it's God created it. God created each and every one of us, whether whether we accept Him or not. It's it's still a fact that He created us, so we still have to have a, a that common respect uh, for for people. And if you get that, it, it, and you know, it, I, I, while you were talking about uh, uh, the Bible scripture there, you know, one of the things that that I was thinking is is uh, you, you know. There's certain things that you got to have common sense about too. You know, I mean, if whenever you park your truck at night, do you park under a light, or do you go find the darkest hole that you can you can find? You know, and and then what do you expect whenever you do one or the other? You know, the light gives you a little bit more security than parking in the darkness. So, I mean, that's where I that's where I was thinking whenever you said that. But it's a, it's the same thing whenever you. Uh, when you get out here in ministry, it, as long as you're uh, up front, forward, and 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 you, you know, I I always go and introduce myself to somebody if the, if it's somebody new that I know's got a patch on or or whatnot, I I go up and introduce myself, tell them who I am and who I'm about. I'm not ashamed of who I am, amen, um, amen, or or what I'm about, you know. And and if they don't like it, which which I you know I'll admit I, I'm halfway uh gonna gonna say that uh I, I i would probably not expect them to come to know the lord right there that very second um but but i know that there's a, there's a lot of guys out there that that put a, that 
put up their front. Uh, they got their uh, their their wall built, and uh, they're they're not going to accept anything from the Lord. And uh, that's fine because I still pray for them too. And matter of fact, I've seen some of those people come around, and, and you know you. You hear, I mean, you hear it all. It, it's no different than, than all these truck drivers we got we got listening in. Uh, it, it's a hard life to be out here and and, and be uh, amongst all the heathen and 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 the pagan uh, paganism that's going on and uh, it just sin. And uh, I mean, it's it, we, we fall short too. Um, so. It's a hard life, so I mean, any support that we can give one another, and if I can be an encouragement to anybody along the way on the on the road, I mean, that's that's what I'm here for. Because um, I have I have my darker moments too every once in a while, you know. I'll, I'll I, I might not I might not slip and, and fall, but uh, by golly, my mind starts starts going that way, and that's when I need to start looking back towards the light and get in the Word. Amen, amen, you're right, you know, and with all the things that are out here to tantalize the drivers, it's easy to get find yourself on that path, but it's being able to recognize it and turn back from it and run back to the cross and <laughs> run as fast as you can. Amen. And, you know, uh, but what is awesome is with all the stuff that we have out here, you know, it's easy to get back in the right direction. Everybody's, pretty much everybody's got an iPhone anymore, and everything's right there at your uh you know, right there at your hand. And, you know, and that's what the Lord's Roundtable is all about, uh, providing a place of refuge for all the truck drivers and travelers and whoever else stumbles across us that they can come and they can find that positive word and, uh, you know, find a good attitude. Uh, as you guys, um, as, as you know, as you grew and the ministry started evolving and going in these different directions uh, that, uh, you know, you're talking about, when did it get to the point where you started with the uh, helping those that were addicted in that and bringing them into your facility? I don't know the exact date whenever uh, uh, bro Brother Mike Shirley uh, in Laurel, Mississippi uh, start, started the mission there. Um, that, that, that's our first mission that was established. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm thinking it was shortly after 2007, or right right about that time frame. Okay. Um, Hellfighters started out in 2007, so I know it was either right at the same time or shortly after. But uh, um, that each president cast their own vision for for, for what their chapter or unit is going to be doing. Okay. And Mike Shirley's was to help people get off addictions, to help men get off addictions. And uh, that place is it's just such an awesome uh, sanctuary for men to, to go and get help and, and to do it God's way. So it's, it's just, it's just, I can't, I can't, I can't talk enough about it really. I can, I, we could we could spend all night on this. I don't want to go that far, but uh, matter of fact, before I would do that, I I, I, I would encourage you to, to get Mike on here instead of me because he, he he has he just has a passion for it. And right. uh, each of our presidents are the same way. They have a passion for the the direction that that the Lord has uh, has given them. That's awesome though because it, it shows that there's expansion in the ministry it's not focused on one select group but that it does reach out to so many others let me ask you you know you're the the national sergeant of arms uh for this ministry what does that what does that entail what is that all about we know what it is in the outlaw side of life but in this ministry what does that what does that mean well Considering I'm a, I drive a truck over the road, I, and I'm, I'm a coast-to-coast -coast guy, north, south, east, west, uh, I, I pick my own loads, I do my own thing. So whenever there's a need for me to be around a unit or to go to a unit, um, which uh, I, I try my best, sometimes it doesn't work out, but 
my biggest thing out here, my biggest role is to encourage uh, my brothers from different units to be able to stop and visit with them. And uh, some, sometimes I even transport a couple cases of Bibles here and there. Um, uh, I, I think, well, I mean, I can give you, for instance, uh, I was down in Laurel here last month, and uh, I knew I was going to be going through uh, Albuquerque uh, in uh, West Monroe, Louisiana, where we both have uh, have two different chapters there. And I think we put on a, a full skid of Bibles, and I, I, I brought them uh, uh, to those two units, and then I, we was able to fellowship a little bit at each spot. So uh, that that's my main purpose is is to encourage uh, the units. Uh, obviously, whenever we have national get-togethers or what whatnot, one of my uh, direct roles, I guess, if you want to look at a more direct role, is is, is keep an order amongst our our nation, uh, our Hellfighter nation, and um, uh, whenever we have meetings. And, and and events and so so forth. It's it's just kind of keeping the order. It's not it's not putting thumb a thumb down on anybody or anything like that. But it's 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 to, to keep the ministry flowing in a, in a in a decent, respectful manner. Amen. And uh, the other part is uh, I usually hang out with the national president and and uh, uh, because we're supposed to go out two by two, and he goes to a lot of meetings. So I'm the other one. Okay, well, that's exciting. That, that probably takes you to a lot of places you'd never have imagined that you would have been going to. How many? How many it, units? It does. How many units those Hellfighters have now? We've got twenty. I think it's twenty-seven in, in the continental United States, and the two in Belize, and then there's a couple other outside of the United States that we're looking at. Wow, that's amazing! And and, and obvious, obviously we're we're growing, and I think that I, I I don't know how many prospective units that we got we're looking into, but I mean it, it de- depends on the day because some some fizzle out once they 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 see our bylaws and uh, uh, that kind of thing. Um, we 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 hold ourselves to a, a high standard, uh, which the the Lord does as well. Amen. So, uh, so, so what does that's it? That's part of our bylaws. Okay. So, what does it take to? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, that's all right. That's all right. What does it take to get a unit in a state? You know, what is it? A group of? I don't know. I don't know. I I could only imagine what would, uh, you know, what steps would be taken. But I'd well, rather hear it from you because mine's just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we 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 have. No, number one, we have a uh, a website that's per, that's pretty well s- uh, set up to, to tell you a lot about us. It's uh, www.hellfighters.org, O-R-G, um, and that's Hellfighters with an S. Uh, our, I mean, our bylaws are published on there and, and, and everything. So, uh, but but the main the main points about starting a unit is is, is uh, make contact with uh, the, the national uh, board or uh, the, the national entity, uh, Mike Grubb or, uh, or or myself, which you'll end up talking with Mike eventually anyhow. But uh, express your interest. Um, number one, you, you need to be a born-again believer. Amen. Um, and and you need to show uh, uh, what I call proof of that. There there, there has to be uh, some type of proof in in your walk that that you're doing. And uh, uh, basically, what what and I'll put this in a nutshell. Basically, what we require is 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 six or seven guys uh, or women uh, that that can form a unit and already going out and doing uh, the business of the master. Um, just because you're waiting to put a patch on your back shouldn't delay you in the ministry that God's got before you. 
if that makes sense. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. And, you know, the problem is there's, you know, I, I hate to get into where you categorize people or, you know, you, you kind of like, uh, you know, the, the stamp them. But I'm trying to figure out how to word this without being too, too direct. Do you see a decline in people really wanting to get involved in the, in the work of the Lord? You know, uh, you know, we know that a lot will uh, confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And, and, you know, the Word of God said that truly, you know, only God knows the, the true heart of man. And we understand that. But we look for the fruits in that. But it, it seems it seems like there's so many that and, and I, can, I say that because I talk to a lot of people and um, but the, the general idea that I'm getting is there's so many of them that are comfortable in, you know, calling upon the name of Jesus and truly becoming born again believers in Jesus Christ, but being content within their own, um, you know, their own relationship with the Lord uh, and not going, uh, you know, nurturing or growing in their faith to go outside of that. And to actually do what you're doing, and, and you know, so many that are, but going into the highways and the hedges and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, whether they have a fear factor, they don't think that, or you know, they don't think they know enough, or you know, whatever the excuses may be, or and you know, and using excuses, you make it sound like it's, uh, you know, that's their cop out, but it, but it's not. You know, there are people that are afraid um, to share their faith, not that they're ashamed of their faith. But they're uh, they're afraid of being uh, shut down for lack of knowledge. Let's say, uh, do you see that being a trend as far as you know even advancing Hellfighters Ministries to find people that are willing to get involved like that? Well, that that triggered me for a lot of statements here. <laughs> I was hoping because <laughs> that was pretty broad. <laughs> no, number one what you were saying about a, a shortage of people or whatnot. I mean, the Bible is, the Bible itself tells us that the laborers are few. The field is ripe, the laborers are few. It, I mean, the Bible's the truth. So you already know that it's, we're going to have, we're going to have to step up to do God's work. Amen. I mean, because you're going to have to make it, make up for more than what you would do, but you got, we got what needs to be done, period. Um, Yes, there is a very big shortage of of people that's that, that's really interested um, that that would that would stay stay the course. Um, um, the only thing that I can really say about that, Steve, is uh, our ministry is so so unique. I mean. Uh, the main focus is to glorify the Lord in, in everything that we do. And if, if we stay focused on that and, and stay kingdom-minded, what I love, to, I love that, that phrase, that, but stay kingdom-minded, then the people that don't want to be, in, to, to be titled as a hellfighter or whatever other ministry that, that there is. But, I mean, if they don't want to be titled as one, they think that the bylaws are too – it doesn't mean that they can't come walk beside us and still do ministry. I mean, you don't have to have a patch on your back. That's not a prerequisite out of the Bible. <laughs> Amen. Um, so so it, it doesn't work that way. You know, I'd rather, I, I'd rather have – Ten people working beside me that doesn't have a patch on their back, but they're all about God. And if we, if we can all work together, that's fine because we're further in the kingdom, and that's the that's the that's the most important thing. That's right. Um, the, the the patch on the back, you know, I I don't like seeing people getting the big head. Uh, you know, and, and you see it day in and day out uh, if, when, when, when you're on the bikes. Uh, they, they, they get We get puffed up. I mean, I, I've been guilty before myself, you know. <laughs> you get puffed up. But, see, I'm representing God. So I have to keep that in mind. And that That's the best thing about that patch on my back is I'm representing God. 
so my actions of while I'm wearing that patch is means a whole lot to me. It keep it keeps it helps keep me in check. It helps me stay accountable, and right. that's that's the very the, the that's the biggest takeaway that I have with being involved directly with the ministry like I am. Right, it puts a big target on you because people are looking at yes, you sir. now. You can't hide from them. You know, it isn't like you're wearing a Christian hat and, and then when you go to, you know, scream and yell at somebody for cutting you off, you take your hat off real quick so they don't see it. You know, <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. Right, you right. know, it, it does keep you, it, it keeps you, um, it keeps you minded. It keeps you uh, keeping your mind straight on who you're representing and how are you representing Jesus Christ. That's amazing. I, I got to go here with this question, uh, Ron. Um, Prior to, uh, what brought you, I'll put it this way, what brought you to the place where you knew that you had a need of a risen Savior? You're going to have to repeat that. I didn't catch that last part. Okay. What brought you to the point in your life where you had a, where you knew that you needed a Savior? have to back up several years before that point and tell you that there was a time where I went through and verbally confessed my sins uh, and and thought I was a Christian but I, I never allowed God in my heart I, I went through the process I I, I, uh, I don't I never got baptized but I, I, I went through the process of giving my heart to the Lord and basically it was just verbal I didn't really let him into my life so I went on for a long time thinking that I was saved and uh, what happened was is I was in the military uh, I, I spent 10 years in active duty in the Marine Corps and uh, my last year I shouldn't say limited to my last year. There were several years there uh, at, at the end of my, my marriage that uh, we were just in, I mean, we just didn't get along. The only time that we got, the only reason why we got along as long as we did was because I spent about eight years away from the house uh, out of the 10 that, while I was in, and, and there wasn't any controversy because I wasn't there to, to, to be a controversy. Um, but I got out of the military to help to try to save them. My, my mind was thinking that I was getting out to try to save my marriage. And uh, about six months later, uh, my, my marriage was uh, dissolved. And uh, because, because of different things that happened in my life and I've got two children I had two children at the time two girls um, uh, they're six years apart and one one was uh, uh, just a baby uh, I, I, I kind of went off the deep end um, through the divorce process um, and uh, the biggest thing that really threw me over the edge was is uh, my children, uh, because of my, my own actions, uh, didn't want anything to do with me. And it, it, it was one night where uh, I was supposed to have my kids, and I went down to get them, and my kids refused to go with me. And uh, I, I, it, it was my last straw, and uh, I went home. And I, I got really irritated, and it, it just didn't stop, just didn't stop. And I, it just kind of kept growing and growing, the, the uh, turmoil that was going on in my mind. And uh, I uh, I grabbed, uh, I always carry a weapon, and uh, I grabbed a forty five off, off my bed stand and went out to the front porch and uh, sat down on the steps and, um, I just I kept I kept thinking about killing myself and and finally it got to a point where I I, I put the gun up to my head and uh, went to pull the trigger and it was just like an audible voice 
I mean, just as plain as I'm talking to you, and I hope that I got a good signal here because it was that good. <laughs> you did. Uh, and God, talk, God told me, he said, I'm not through with you yet. And Steve, I didn't, I didn't come to a, a point of conversion at that point. I got mad. I got angry. I couldn't fire the weapon. God, and, and the safety was off. And I tried pulling the trigger at that time before he called. And, and it, I couldn't pull the trigger any further. And I went out back behind my house, and I unloaded my weapon in the dark, just out of anger, just shooting anything. And uh, I went I went back in the house, and I cried myself to sleep that night. And I woke, I woke up, and I thought I just had a bad dream. I hadn't been drinking or anything like that that night. I mean, it, it, there wasn't anything that it was just me and me and God dealing with me, and I I, I looked over and I seen that my uh, my weapon was empty. I looked up my backyard and looked at, at the area that I that I was shooting, and there was there was a a 500 gallon propane tank out there about half full of propane <laughs> that that I missed. I didn't hit it, and. At that point, I just come to the idea that it was reality of what I went through last night, and it was reality that God even spoke to me. And I went back out there on the front porch steps where he talked to me. And I told him, I said, if you're not through with me, you need to show me what I need to do. Because, I, because at that time, I didn't feel like I was acceptable to him to be able to know what he wants me to do. So I told him, I said, make it vivid. Illuminate my path. And man, from that point on, God has had his way with me. And uh, there's been rocky roads and there's been uh, gigantic mountains that we that, that's moved out of the way and some that I had to climb. But it, it's just been uh, been awesome, and uh, you, you know, coming from a a life that I had, Steve, I I had a loving mom, I had a loving dad. They never got divorced. They were, I mean, they they had some rocky roads too. But I I come from a really good family. My dad, we never went to church and stuff like that, but. Uh, Dad always spoke highly of God. He he always got mad whenever people put God's name down. Um, so it was it was a respectful environment. But I come to realize that I was just as dead as the Apostle Paul was before he converted, murdering Christians. I was just as dead. It didn't matter uh, because. You're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. And it, and it doesn't matter what you've done. God's big enough to take it away. So that's the point of my conversion. That was about uh, 10, 11, 12 years ago. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. That is awesome. I love to hear testimonies. I look for them. You know, and uh, to see how God moves in so many people's lives and how he does it. And, you know, for all, that's why I, I stress uh, when we're on here talking for all those that are listening, you you know, as you hear uh, the testimony, you know, your life's probably the same. You know, it's not too much different. Uh, names might be different. Locations might be different. A few things might be different. But the thing that is the same is in that state, you're going to hell. There's no, you know, there's no better way of putting it. You got to put it exactly the way it is. But as you heard in this testimony, God's not a respecter of man. He loves it each and every one of us equally. Because when you know, Ron, I, I was thinking about that a while back. You know, if, let me let me let me say it this way: If God loved you more than He loved me, 
He gave me Jesus Christ. What greater gift could he give you? There is no greater gift. So that in itself proves that God's not a respecter man. He loves each and every one of us uh, equally uh, and, and in a place that we're at. So for those of you that are listening, you think you've lived a miserable life, a rotten life, done wicked, evil things. You're no different than anybody else that is walking the face of this earth. The only difference between uh, one and, and as opposed to the other is Jesus Christ. That is the only difference. So I, I'm excited. I, you know, I really enjoyed you sharing your testimony because that really opens up. You know, it, people should stop and think about that. You know, uh, you know, God could do it for Ron. He could do it for Steve. You know, he does it for Mike. What makes them any different? That, that's awesome. That's the God that we serve. So let me ask you, when did, you know, I, I, oh my gosh, this really blew me away when I seen, uh, you know, I haven't had the pleasure to make it down you guys' way. I would love to do that here before wow. too long. Uh, but I, I seen, uh, you know, a picture of you guys' facilities. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. What, <coughs> mm, excuse me, excuse me getting over this laryngitis and whatever other bug came along with it, but I'm not claiming it. It's just passing through. Uh, what all goes on in that <laughs> building in itself? Because that's a huge building. That's a beautiful building. Well, uh, you're talking about the Hellfighter USA building? Yes. Okay, the, the Hellfighter USA building was built to help support the mission. Um, all, all the proceeds that 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 comes out uh, that they get goes to support uh, the mission at the cross there in Laurel, Mississippi. The mission at the cross in Laurel, Mississippi. Uh, before I get into what Hellfighter USA is, um, that that's the guys that's that's struggling with addiction, struggling with what, whatever it is that's keeping them from being. Uh, a, a, a good disciple for Christ. Um, that that's where they're they're housed, it, and it's a I believe uh, it's a one year program now. Um, cost the guys nothing. There's there's no fun physical money that the guys have to pay in. Now the reason why. I, I mentioned that is because most of those guys work at Hellfighter USA. Now, they, they they get a they they don't have to pay anything for their basically their recovery or or their while they're there for that year program, but they do have to work. I mean, they got they got to keep their minds off stuff. <laughs> so, uh, but the Hellfighter USA building. Uh, that supports that that mission for those men, and there's other people that are actually employed there as well. But it had obviously we sell motorcycles there. I mean that's 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 a, that, that's what brought uh, Hellfighter USA about. We had a, a Hellfighter motorcycle shop, um, and we rolled it into the Hellfighter USA building. So we have a huge selection of motorcycles. I, I think, I, and I'm just guessing. I think our brother lost his connection. He was anticipating that he'd be with him. Ah, uh, oh, there you are. You're back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What where did you? What did I leave off at then? <laughs> Bringing the motorcycle part of it into the building. Hellfighter uh, motorcycle shop uh, moved into Hellfighter USA, and uh, we, Mike Shirley likes to call them. He, he's the manager of, of the motorcycle or Hellfighter USA right now. So uh, Mike Shirley likes to call those uh, born again bikes because what it is <laughs> is uh, we, we just get we get motorcycles from everywhere uh, used. 
Uh, obviously, we don't buy new bikes and bring them in and sell them as new bikes. We but we got some really nice bikes there. Uh, and, and if there's anything wrong with them, they they fix them and they put them back out on the out on the showroom floor and and sell them. Um, there's some that come that are wrecked and they just resurrect them, so to speak. It's just it's just an awesome concept uh, that follows the guidelines of the Bible, and, and, that, and that's the purpose of it to show those guys. But uh, Steve, we they got that bike shop there. They sell uh, uh, Jeeps is what what uh, really big into. They modify a lot of Jeeps and and sell them as mo- you know the mod- already modified versions. Um, they they've got golf carts. They've got mopeds. Uh, they uh, what else do they got? Oh, we got a gun shop. Uh, guns and knives that they sell in there. There's a chapel in there that you can go and pray. Um, and I don't know what the exactly the time frame is, but there's also going to be a little uh, restaurant in there that's going to serve steak and potatoes. So uh, what am I leaving out? Um, I'm leaving out two two big things. Uh, National headquarters for Hellfighters is up on the top story of that building, and there's apartments uh, on one end of the building as well upstairs that houses men that continue to stay and work there uh, after they've uh, graduated the program at the Mission at the Cross there. So, and Believe me, they are beautiful, nice apartments. Uh, I mean, there, there wasn't anything spared for those guys that actually graduated. I mean, it, it's a it's a beautiful thing for them to, to learn how to uh, live a new kind of life. Hey, man, that's awesome. I'll tell you what, it just blows my mind. Because, you know, I went on your website, obviously, and, uh, you know, it was uh, resource or researching different things than that. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just amazing because – I look at it this way, you know, and, you know, society casts so many people down and they call it, you know, they, they deem them to be the, you know, the trash, you know, uh, worthless, not of any value whatsoever. But God takes what society deems as trash and he turns it into his treasures. And the Lord didn't put that on my heart, you know, when I first started, uh, you know, learning about you guys and that and the different other ministries that are out here. And it's just amazing because what society is deemed as no good is doing exactly what the churches are not not doing that they're supposed to be doing. You know, it's going out into the streets. You know, not sitting there in your uh, you know in your church waiting for these people that are broken and wounded to come in because they're not coming in. You know, the prostitutes, the drug dealers, the drug addicts—they're not coming in unless something really dramatically happens in their life and they're grabbing at straws. So the church has got to go out to them. It's got to go out, like the Word of God says, out in the highway and the hedges. And that's exactly what you guys are doing. And it just amazes me. I, man, I'm just, I would love to come down and visit you guys, but it seems like if I come down, i got to come down with a lot of money because <laughs> you're talking a lot of stuff I like. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure they would welcome that, Steve, but, I mean, it, you, you, it's an experience to, to be down there. And, and you 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 uh to to experience a I, I guess for a, for a better term I, 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 it, the serenity that you have being around Christians that I mean there's no foul language there's no uh, I mean it's just a real serene place to be because they, they try to make that. Uh, the best example, best place of you know for those guys going through that program, and you know there's uh, we're human, so but to experience that and the hospitality that they have there is just top top off the off the top charts. You know, it's I mean they're just they're just just a great environment to be in. I hate whenever I get down there myself. I, I live in Indiana. So whenever I get down to Laurel, Mississippi myself, I hate to leave just because of the, the 
just the fellowship that we have, and, and, and I mean, you, you just know God's working in so many lives right there all at once, and it's just awesome to, right. to be able to see that. You know, just looking at you guys' Bibles that you hand out, you know, it just, that in itself grabs your attention. Um, I had a, well, actually, I'm going to call him out. He's on the line here tonight, uh, Gary Gaither. Uh, he sent me one of you guys' Bibles, and I, I love it. Uh-huh. You know, a search and rescue, you know, search and rescue handbook. That, that I mean, that is so awesome, and, and just the way that it's, uh, you know, uh, the cover just grabs you, and I can't see why, you know, I couldn't understand if anybody wouldn't be attracted to it just to grab a hold of it and see what it's all about. Amen. It, well, whenever Hellfighters first started, that used to be our bottom rocker was search and rescue instead of Christian ministries. But we, we tried to align that out where every every ministry could, or every unit and chapter could do their own ministry. And, you know, it, it's still the same concept regardless because that's that's what that's about is going out and searching for those that, that – that, that I grab on to Jesus and showing them and showing them how how to, how to get there. Amen. 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 That is awesome. You know, for the guys that come in for the drug treatment, eh, you know, I know a lot of these numbers that, you know, you probably, you know, you might not know because you're not, you know, right next to it all the time. But what is the recovery rate? You, you know, I I'm I'm really glad you asked that because you you can't compare a Christ-based program with a secular program, and you hear a lot of negative numbers. Right. I, I believe I believe I talked to I, I I think it was Mike Shirley, the the program director for the Mission at the Cross. Um. I think. Don't hold me to this, but I believe he's got like an eighty-something percent uh, success rate of guys staying staying off dope. Right, right. You know, and that don't surprise me. You know, some might say, "Wait a minute," you know, that's kind of high. That don't surprise me because even when you look at uh, the prison and how many people uh, go back to prison in the first year, I think for uh, those that don't believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, it's 86% in the first year, I believe, is what the last numbers I've seen, where if they truly confess right. Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and they are truly born again, it drops to 10%, and that's amazing. So, you right. know, you guys being in the 80s, Amen. that that does not surprise me one bit because it's all Christ-based, you know. And, and I like, I think it was, right. I think when I was talking to Mike one day, I think it was him that told me, I forget who told me, uh, but they made the statement, what good is it to uh, get a man uh, clean of drugs and he still goes to hell? You know, you got to get him safe, right. got to get him clean, got to get him safe. And I know right. when I say we got to get him safe, right. we, don't, we don't get him safe. You know, God draws them, the Holy Spirit convicts them, the blood of Jesus Christ saves them, and Steve's name ain't in that program anywhere. You know, so <laughs> we say, you know, we got to get him safe. And, 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 a, and a program ain't going to save you. A, pro, a program will put you in an atmosphere that that will help you uh, gain focus on where God wants to lead you. Amen. You know, and, and that that's kind of the the environment. That's that's the whole. Yep, I see his number dropped off. He, he knew he was going to lose. He's I. Uh, in between California and Arizona, and there was a, a spot there he knew he was going to drop off, and, you know, he's not just breaking up. His uh, number is completely gone. Uh, so with that being said, um, I just want to stress uh, very strongly if, in fact, you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, we look at decisions that we make, Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to stop there because I see Ron's back with us. It's all yours, brother. I'm back. (laughs) (laughs) And you were saying? (laughs) I don't even know where I was at. 
I was on a roll. <laughs> he, was, he was talking about uh, the percentage of uh, those oh, that, the yeah. Okay. Well, you know, prison ministry and jail ministry was something that I did uh, for probably about five years. Uh, and I'm talking about five years active week in, week out. And those statistics seem like they've not changed since the 1960s. Um, I used to be involved with another ministry, and I'm sure uh, Bill Glass would not uh, frown on me for, for put, putting a plug in on his ministry. But Bill Glass Prison Ministries, I, I did a lot with him, and then I, I did a lot of with the local jail and the local prison in uh, Newcastle, Indiana. And uh, but the statistics are the same. You know, eight, 85 to 90 percent of the guys that go into prison, they come back out, uh, they get go right back in, uh, saved or unsaved. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like how you how you said if they're if they truly are saved, you know, and You're because. Right. It, 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 it's you know you're vulnerable in prison you're vulnerable in jail and you're you're grasping on anything to get you uh, out of the out of that environment uh, that that you're in whenever you're in a, a what do you call them a a, a cell or a, a, I know the word I can't think of it um, a pod you know a, a know 30 or 40 people if you're not you, you, you know, they know it's a safe and uh, so so why wouldn't you want to be involved in that and, and if you confess you know you're just for some it's just like well I'm a hero today <laughs> you know so but for those that take it seriously and Yeah, he's having a real tough time keeping his signal. For those that um, are listening, uh, you know, Ron's an active truck driver. And, uh, you know, plus he's, um, you know, 100% into this ministry. So as a lot of us that are truck drivers and doing ministry, uh, when we get into where we're talking to different people on the phone or what have you, sometimes that signal's not always there. And uh, unfortunately, that's what Ron's experiencing here tonight. Uh, but for the the brighter side of it, uh, for the hour that we have been on, we had him for the majority of the time. So I, I praise God for that. I praise God for that. But uh, again, uh, getting back to what I was saying, um, you know, we all make decisions in our lives and we deem them to be very important, whether it be, you know, do I get married? You know, do we buy a house? Do we buy a new car? Do we have children? These are all very important decisions that we make. But the most important decision that you could ever make is the decision of Jesus Christ. What decision are you going to make concerning Jesus Christ? Are you going to receive him or are you going to reject him? And so with that being said, I would pray that each and every one of you that are listening here this evening, first of all, keep in mind, there is nothing that you have done that is so terrible that the awesome God that we serve would not forgive you. Nothing. You're no different than the rest of us. The Word of God says one sin is no greater than another. That if you violated one of the sins, that you, or, you know, if you violated one of the commandments, you violated them all. And so you need to keep that in mind when you're making this decision for Jesus Christ. Any, any, any wrong that you have done is no greater than another wrong. And it's just a very simple. Uh, Mark. <laughs> okay, there he is. Come on, brother. I don't know what you heard last. <clears throat> I'm trying Steve? to. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. Um, I did you were talking about. I, I just know that the, the. Okay, go ahead. You were talking about Bill Glass and the uh, prison ministries. Yep. 
Yep. So, uh, so I, I was involved with Bill Glass. I was also involved in Newcastle Prison in Indiana, uh, doing doing ministry there every weekend. Um, and uh, I think we we had a good we had a good team there in, in the Wayne County Jail and uh, in the county that I live in in Indiana, uh, where I think I did once. I think I did one Saturday, Friday or Saturday a month, um, and then sometimes I would substitute and go in with 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 somebody that was already doing it, just because I had a I just had a passion for it. Because there 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 were guys that that needed to hear the gospel. There there were guys that needed more that well. There's nothing more important than hearing the gospel, but there's nothing more important than supporting somebody let them know that you really care that you're not just you know giving giving them the uh the chance to come to know the lord and then walking right back out of their life and uh you you know i mean there's a place for everything um but the guys in the guys in jail the guys in prison that are incarcerated like that uh they need a friend And and if they're gonna if they're going to grab on to Jesus, which which we pray that happens, then uh, they they really need uh, a friend to help them uh, get through it all. Because let's face it, as as soon as we convert and, and we accept Christ in our life, uh, Satan's retaliating. And for for a new believer, sometimes they're not prepared for what what's to follow it's easier for them just to fall back where they was amen you're right about that Did you hear me yeah yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> you know when we was talking about how many you know what the percentage was on uh, you know the recovery and staying clean let me ask you what's the percentage of those that come in uh that receive jesus christ how many uh salvation uh testimonies uh do you guys have uh out of the program yes uh the the the, the, the guys that are successful and and not to drugs no no what i'm asking is for those that I, come in when they come in they're just coming in off the streets and that and for those that come in how many of them give their lives to jesus christ while they're in your program I would say that the ones that could quit the program is a thing. Yeah, we're losing you again, brother. To, to a different avenue of recovery, but um, we lost for, you. <laughs> we lost you there for, for a few for, minutes. For my, okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I would say it's it's real close to the same statistic of those that survive addiction and, and get away from it. Okay, that's pretty good Probably rate. Probably around 80%. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yes. That's pretty awesome. You know, that's a higher percentage than a lot of churches nowadays. I, like I said, Steve, you know, it's with, with the environment that that's offered, there and and they hear they hear I, i'm going to guess you hear about jesus consistently all day in one way shape or form and it, it it's solitude man i mean it's it's great to, i mean one of one of my greatest things we've we've, we've got a uh, national chaplain ed black and uh he lives down in houston and i get i used to go down there all the time i think i wore out my welcome a few times <laughs> But one of the things that I loved to do was was go and sit in his living room at night before we go to bed, and we talk about Jesus. And uh, it, uh, it's it's just you know it's just a setting, and that's the way it is in Laurel. Is you know you go there, you can just talk about Jesus. If you've got a passion for the Lord, then I mean it. You, you would you'll understand. And, and you can feel me on it because it's that's the way it is. I just love to talk about the Lord. Right, right. 
even even though I've been talking about myself, <laughs> talking about this ministry, I love to talk about the Lord. God is God is good. God has been uh, uh, has shown me great things, and uh, he has dealt with me in many ways to to get my life straightened out. Right. And and I'm gonna be I'll be the first one to admit that it wasn't easy. It, it's never been easy uh, to 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 come from where I was to where I am. And uh, I, I and I the more I the more I move forward towards God, the more I realize that uh, I got a lot, still got a long way to go. <laughs> amen, amen. You're exactly right. It seems like when you get around a bunch of people and you start talking about the Lord, you find out you got a lot more to learn as well. You know, because one qu- one statement will bring a question, and then when you start pondering that, that's like when you when you're preparing for a Bible study. As you're doing the Bible study, the next thing you know, I re- I refer to it as being in the bloodline of uh, uh, what was his name. I always use him as an example too, Elmer Fudd. You know, hunting them rabbits. We're going down another rabbit trail here, but we'll get it back here in a second. You know, you start talking about a scripture, and another one pops in your head. Another one pops in your head, and the next thing you know, you've ran so many rabbit trails. You're trying to figure out how the heck you got there and how you're going to get back. But it always brings up good conversation and good questions. Absolutely. Well, brother, go ahead. (laughs) Ron, are you there? We'll give him a minute. His number disappeared. So I'm going to make this quick because he'll be back in three times I've tried to share the gospel. But for those that don't know Jesus Christ, just know that the Word of God says that there, there's none righteous, not a single one of us. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the good news is salvation is a gift of God. The Bible says not of works, least any man should boast. It's a gift that God has given us because he loves you so much that he sent his son to die specifically for you. Look in the mirror. It's you that God is reaching out to. So if you have never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's just a matter of just saying, confessing to Jesus that you are a sinner, that you are lost, and that you do need a Savior, and ask him to come into your heart, and he will. Ask him to be your Lord and your Savior. And he will come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior. And that's all it takes. You don't have to go to a big fancy church with stained glass windows. You don't even have to wear a tie or your best dress or whatever it might be. You just got to go in with a heart seeking. And God said, if you seek me, you'll find me. So with that being said, if you if you do not know without any doubt that if you died tonight that you would go to heaven, seek God because he's there for you. Cry out to Jesus because he will save you. Yes, we hear you, Ron. I had to get that out, man. Three times when you went off, I started into that, and you came back. So I wanted to hurry up, you know. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I'm sorry I interrupted. I feel like I did. No, no, you're all right. Uh, All right. I got a a green light, and I'm in Arizona now, so. Amen, (laughs) amen, amen. But what I wanted to say was it was a real pleasure having you here with us this evening. And uh, you got me where I'm wanting to get on the Internet and book a flight to Mississippi. I don't like driving. I hate to drive. (laughs) Yeah, you'll be welcomed in down there for sure. That's for uh, some good people. That Southern hospitality has not left Laurel, Mississippi. (laughs) <laughs> amen, amen. <clears throat> well, brother, before we sign off here tonight, I definitely would love to uh, pray with you and pray for you, if I might. Yes, sir. I would much appreciate it. Amen. Well, Father God, we thank you for our brother, Lord. We thank you for opening that door and showing us more family members. Each and every, each and every day, Lord, you show us a new family member, and I praise you for that. So, Father God, I pray for my brother. I pray that you give him safe travels, Lord. And as you have put him in that truck, Father God, you're using that truck to get him into parts of the country that you need him to be in. 
everywhere that he goes, it was already planned out before we were even conceived in our mother's womb. She knew where we would be this very second. And that just shows what an awesome and mighty God that you are. I pray, Father, your hedge of protection around him. I pray no hurt or harm or evil, wicked thing will come against him, Lord. I pray, Father God, for all those out here, Lord, that you protect them as well. And, Father, if there's any sick amongst us, Lord, that as Jehovah Rapha, you would put a healing hand upon them. Let them feel that healing virtue flowing through their bodies, Lord. Let them feel that healing coming unto them. Lord God, I pray that everything my brother touches, you bless. Every step that he takes is blessed. And I pray, Lord God, for each and every one of us. It's not if we have any that are in our families lost, but those that are in our families that are lost. I pray, Lord God, that even right now, they would feel that drawing of your Holy Spirit. That, Father God, no matter where they're at, Lord, that they'll respond to that. And as my brother was talking uh, about, it's not about a program. Father, you know they've got all these different step programs, but the only program they need, and it's not a program, but the only thing they need is that one step, and that's to come to the foot of the cross where the healing begins. So, Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's been with us here tonight. I thank you, Father God, for our brother to come and share. And, and Lord God, I pray that everybody that everybody grabs a hold of this, Lord, and that they understand that you have a plan for them as well. And, Lord, it was just a matter sure. that they need to know that they just need to step out. If they feel that within them, knowing that you're drawing them, to step out. Because if you call them, you'll enable them. You'll get them to do. You'll, you'll be able to provide for them what they need in, in the ministry that you have for them. Each and every one of us, there's a ministry that you have for us. And we just need to step out and not have any fear. So, Father God, we just thank you for this evening. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you do for us. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that died for us. And, Father God, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And it's only by one name, and that's the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, Steve. And I, I pray that uh, th those that have heard uh, tonight or uh, that kind of chimed in and uh, listened to us tonight, I hope I was an encouragement. And, I, and more so than anything, I hope the Lord draws you closer to him tonight. And, uh if you can use me anyway, man, give me a call. Oh, we'll definitely be in touch. There's no doubt about that. One thing about coming to the Lord's round table and one thing about, you know, coming in and where we know you, we don't forget you. We'll pester you until you can't be pestered anymore. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you so much. Bless you all. Hey, bless you too. And uh, I'd like to say good night to each and every one that has been with us here. And uh, as we go out this evening, we go out in style. ...of becoming Christians every day, getting saved, giving their life to the Lord Jesus. But an alarming statistic is that a majority of those people are attending a church where the pastor doesn't even own a Bible. Together, you and I can make a difference. You can have an eternal impact on someone's life around the globe. How can you do this? You can do this by partnering with Mission Cry Christian Resources International. Together, people just like you and I have been partnering for over 60 years, sending over $350 million worth of free Bibles and Christian books to 175 nations. How have we done this? We've done it with people just like you sharing their extra Bibles and Christian books. You know, the average home in America has got six Bibles sitting on its shelf. We encourage people just like you to partner with us. Send us those Bibles and Christian books. We then put them on sea containers, send them around the world, and freely give them to people who cannot afford it. Therefore, you and I raising up orphans, evangelists, pastors, and evangelists, equipping them for the works of service. I'm asking you to partner with me, Reverend Jason Wolford, at Mission Cry. Visit us at missioncry.com. God bless you, and have a great day.